In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning. Good morning, Father. And welcome to the Mindy Basilica and Shrine of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. Today we celebrate the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and also the 800 years of this Natalis of our Holy Father, Saint Dominic. So all over the world, we celebrate uh, the feast or the solemnity of our Holy Father, Saint Dominic. Jesus reveals himself as the bread of life. However, the Jews could not accept this because of their unbelief. Nonetheless, he persists in his claim because he knows that it is the Father who draws people to faith in him. In this celebration, let us open ourselves to the Father's invitation to listen to the beloved Son, for Jesus alone has the words of eternal life. He alone can lead us back to the Father. My dear friends, let us now make ourselves worthy of this holy celebration. Let us also remember to offer this Eucharistic celebration to all who are hungry and to all who are suffering from this COVID-19, especially the Delta variants. We offer this Mass also for our beloved ones who are celebrating the birthday today, today or their anniversaries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my, my fault, fault, through, through my fault, fault through, through my, my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Elijah preaches God's word against King Ahab and his wicked Queen Jezebel. Thus, he is persecuted. God sends an angel who restores Elijah's physical and moral strength. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. 
he lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. But then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked, and there at his head was a heart cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him and ordered, Get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate, and drank. Then strengthened by that food, he walked forty days and forty nights to the mountain of God, Horeb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. have received from God is kind and compassionate. By being true to the Spirit, we make our life a pleasing offering to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting and revealing must be removed from you, along with all malice. 
And be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, Stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, This shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from the Father. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I would like to share the pastoral letter uh, of uh, the Diocese of Linga in the Gupan. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, is God punishing us? Are we getting the harvest of seeds we planted? I am sure it has crossed your mind. Are all these calamities from nature punishments from God? I have been struggling with this thought, and the question keeps on lingering. I cannot answer. I do not really know. Who am I to interpret the meaning of this series of calamities, earthquakes, and erupting volcanoes, floods, and long days of rain, and relenting pandemic and mutant viruses, unprecedented death counts? What more? How come they are happening almost at the same time? Only God and only Him can answer the question. Are we being punished for our sins, personal sins, and national sins? The question is, God punishing us? 
implies that we are aware that we have done some evil or wrong. The punishment is but just and deserved. Hence, more important than the question, is God punishing us, is the question, are we guilty of sins against God that merit punishment? Have we been a faithful and obedient people of God? Is there nothing in our consciences that deserve punishment? Are our consciences national and personal, clean and pure? If we are not innocent, regardless of whether God is punishing us through these calamities or not, then we must repent and atone. If this is not yet his punishment, let us not wait for the punishment before we repent. Sin is the reason for penance. We have sinned. We cannot deny. The reason for repentance and atonement is not the ongoing divine punishment or the impending divine wrath. If we have sinned, then we must repent, regardless of the wrath of God. Do we need to be punished? So we will repent. That would be very late. Penance and atonement of sins are part of Christian life. The Lord offers His body and blood so that sins might be forgiven. What must we atone for? If then my people upon whom my name has been pronounced humbles themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, I will hear them from heaven and pardon their sins and heal their land. Have we as shepherds of flock become cold, complacent, presumptuous, entitled, and indifferent? Have we become dealers of cheap grace, offering mercy without repentance, tolerating evil in exchange of convenience, living in hypocrisy as we daily hold the divine mysteries, standing guard like crying wolves of the sheep? We were tasked to feed. Before the Lord and before the sheep, we repent and seek pardon. Have we, your shepherds, lost our voice to condemn the vulgarity of words because we ourselves are guilty of vulgar examples? Have we, your priests and bishops, failed to gather a forceful voice to condemn the killings of the poor because we have not done enough to help them live. If we could not clamor for civil transparency and accountability, could it be because we have remiss in submitting our own? If we could not condemn the blasphemy and cursing against God, could it be because we carry sacrilege and profanity in our consciences? Are we afraid of the media and public opinion, but have in fact lost the fear of the Lord, causing the flock immense confusion? Are we helpless to fight the fake news because we have created and shared our own petty gossips? Of us spiritual leaders, could the Lord not justly say, therefore, do and observe all things, whatsoever they tell you, but do not follow their example. We really and truly are stained and ugly and unworthy in the sight of the Lord. If our only credit were only our own merits, we should be silent forever, and yet, we still dare to be the prophets of our time, denouncing evil and calling for repentance and atonement because of the Lord who has chosen and sent us in spite of us. Only in and through the Lord are we prophets 
by His mercy alone, not by our merits. Brothers and sisters, believers in God, shepherds and sheep, we must be sorry for our sins, do penance, and return to the Lord now. Our time is borrowed. We are, we, we are who we honor. We are who we choose to lead us. Conscience must prevail over survey popularity. Nationalism must prevail over right, regionalism and ethnicity. The common good must prevail over family, dynasty interests. Democracy cannot survive in a nation whose citizens ignore the voice of the conscience. This is the stain in our national conscience that needs cleansing, penance, and conversion. Lord, have mercy on our split Christianity. The use of murder to solve the drug means cries to heaven for vengeance. Those who kill their brethren, those who order the killings, those who watch and do nothing, and those who continue to upload the killings, they will have to face the judgment of God sooner than they think. Your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. Upon the killers and their cheering or passive enablers, Lord have mercy. Those who cheer for the murderers and murderers, Lord forgive, Lord have pity on the restless souls of the victims of death of murderous life. Dishonesty continues to be rewarded and plunderers continue to take riches. The loathsome culture of corruption continues to bleed the poorest of the poor. Being helpless and unable to stop the stealing, the poorest shall content themselves with receiving crumbs from the boats they sell and say it is better than nothing. No education for the children, no medicines for the sick, no food for the hungry, no roof over the head, no guilt, no pity from their own affluent brothers and sisters. Lord, may the poor find it in their hearts to forgive us now. Lord, we atone for our sins of negligence and abuse of the poorest. Lord, do not hold this sin against us. We know that on Judgment Day, the poorest will sit in judgment over us. The poor are our masters, and how great is our sin against them. The thanks the Lord give us to praise Him, we have used for calumny, slander, defamation, and deceit. The lips that should proclaim the mercies of God are now latrines of filth and scum and poison. Vulgarity is idolized. Mockery of God is laughable. The children are cajoled to imitate. Who to me I cry, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and live among the people of unclean lips. We strike our breast in shame and atone for the sins of our lips. The arena of aton for atonement and penance is inside our once lax souls that we now want to open to the Lord. Return to me with your whole heart, with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Rend your heart, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. Spare your people, Lord. Do not let your heritage become a disgrace, a byword among the nations. I invite you to fast and pray for the atonement of our sins, personal and family and national, privately, away from the social media, known only to God, 
on a date and time that is most inconvenient. Let us gain back the righteousness of our interior lives, which have been much compromised and forgotten by the culture of social media. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received the reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your father in secret, and your father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look blooming like hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received the reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you may not appear to be fasting, except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. Having done our fasting and prayers in the hiddenness of our souls, I invite you to declare a community fast and prayer on the feast of St. Maximilian Kolbe on the 14th of August. Let the admonition of the prophet Joel be our guide. Between the porch and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare, O Lord, your people, and make not your heritage a reproach with the nations ruling over them. In the weeks ahead, after our personal and community fast, I encourage you to form circles of fasters and intercessors and discerners. Let the Spirit teach us how to be Christ's disciples in desmans of turmoil, treason, and uncertainty, and discord. Evil is so real, but God has conquered evil, and we shall overcome. Is God punishing us? Only God can answer. Ask Him as you pray. Do we deserve that we are going through? Yes, and we deserve even worse than this. Penance, penance, penance. Time is running out. May God have mercy on us. From the Cathedral of St. John the Evangelist, the Gupan City, August 6, 2021, Feast of the Lord's Transfiguration. Signed, Socrates Bibeliegas, Archbishop of Lingayen, the Gupan. My dear friends, this is for our personal reflections and maybe later on a community reflections and a national reflections. We all stand. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one, in one God. God. The Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. First man and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and this kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess on baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God's love abounds for us. Let us now pray to God, our Father, to manifest His love for us as we plead to Him with confidence. Let our response be, Listen to your people, O Lord. Listen to your people, O Lord. For Pope Francis, Socrates, our Bishop, priests and deacons, may they be faithful in their commitment to God and to His people. May they lead the Church to towards a deeper desire for eternal life. We pray. Listen to your people, O Lord. For government and civil leaders, may they be zealous in their work of justice and peace to achieve God's plan for the world. We pray. Listen to your people, O Lord. Against the pandemic, may the Lord heal and restore into wholeness all who are affected in any way by COVID-19. Let them all find comfort in God, we pray. Listen to your people, O Lord. For all the faithful, may we find sure hope and strength in our daily partaking of the Eucharist. May we live loving each other as brothers and sisters in Christ, we pray. Listen to your people, O Lord. For our departed loved ones, may the Lord embrace them and grant them joy in His eternal embrace, we pray. Listen to your people, Lord. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community in our personal intentions. We pray. Listen to your people, O Lord. Let us continue praying for one another. And let us pray especially for those who are suffering now in isolation places. And especially those who are working for the good of everyone, our health workers, our frontliners. Almighty Father, help us to multiply your graces through our good works and solidarity with those who suffer. May we be filled with your, with your blessing necessary to bring service to our brothers and sisters to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is really right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You forward man into your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate a memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we might be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Socrates our Archbishop, Fidelis his assistant, Gerard our master of the order, the religious and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with our Father Saint Dominic, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Please stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we might be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I love you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that I should enter under my roof, but, but only I say the word, word and my soul, soul shall be healed. Please stand. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth to Christ our Lord. Amen. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikisa sa ating pagdiriwang ngayong linggo. And let us uh, try to pray, keep praying for one another, especially during this time of pandemic. would like to thank also our online viewers, participants, especially in our YouTube as well as uh, our Facebook and also for our radio listeners. Thank you very much for our choir that gives life to our liturgy, to our celebration, as well as our radio uh, operators who uh, give us uh, life, especially during this period. Thank you very much for our lectors and commentators, as well as our frontliners here, particularly our Eucharistic ministers and ushers. Please keep safe. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your down for a blessing. May the Lord God of all consolation order your days in his peace and grant you the gifts of his blessing. Amen. May he free you always from every distress and confirm your hearts his love. Amen. So that on this life journey, you may be effective in good works 
rich in gifts of hope, faith, and charity, and make them happily to eternal life. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Go in the peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. We will now have the blessing of our sick brothers and sisters and also for the blessing of your religious articles. Kindly remember the names of your loved ones who are sick, especially at home and in the hospital. Our hope is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Let us pray. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. Show we kindness toward our sick brothers and sisters, free them from all illness, and restore them to good health through the intercession of our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For your religious articles. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, may all these rosaries, images, candles, oil, and other religious articles be blessed and made holy in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.